We at NMSDC recognize that educating and developing MBEs is critical to preparing the network of minority business owners, for capital access, and long-term business success. We want to help those seeking access to narrow down the stages of investment, forms of capital, and requirements for funding. Brought to you by the generous donation from UPS, this Access to Capital series will offer tips and insights directly from investors seeking minority-owned ventures. Hello, everyone, and welcome to NMSDC's Access to Capital series. I am your host, Angela Guzman. We're continuing conversations that took place in Austin, Texas in October at the NMSDC annual conference. In this series, we will meet a ton of capital providers and investors who will give us some guidance and tips on how to best access capital that is in the market available to minority businesses. Today, joining me, we have Ms. Monica Mantilla. Monica is a co-founder and managing partner at Small Business Community Capital. Ms. Mantilla serves as the president and chief executive officer at Altura Capital Group. She sits on the board of the Stanford Latino Business Action Network, the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the Financial Education Initiative, the Hispanic Heritage Foundation, and is also an advisor of the Billion Dollar Roundtable and a participant of the Aspen Latinos and Society program in which we both had the pleasure of participating. Monica, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. It's great to be here. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. So what we really want to do today is start to peel back the layers of capital and really understand what the different stages of investment are, the fund that you're managing, and how minority businesses can access those funds. So let's start a little bit with, tell us about the funds that you manage and, and what they cover. Are they specific? to minority businesses only, or do you structure things a little bit differently? Sure. Well, first of all, it's great to be here. Uh, you and I share a passion of helping minority businesses uh, and diverse businesses scale and grow and achieve the success that they ought to achieve. And we know partnerships with corporations are so important, so I celebrate your um, work, your phenomenal work with NBC Comcast to really understand where the value of these companies is and how to get them to partner with the right capital resources, with the right strategic resources so they can scale and grow. Um, I am a co-founder along with another four partners, we're actually five partners today, running a fund, an impact fund called Small Business Community Capital. We invest in small businesses around the country uh, the businesses are, you know, small, but they're usually, um, they have to be at least a million dollars in EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, and depreciation. Mm -hmm. And we look for businesses that have great entrepreneurs, that have solid business strategies, and that truly have the opportunity to grow and excel. And we're always looking to partner them with the corporations and their supplier diversity efforts so that we can really create a win-win-win the minority or small business company can grow, the corporation can have a great supplier, and we can do good investment. So it really creates a tremendous amount of opportunity and wealth and success of business in, in the small business and the diverse world. So to add to that, I do have a question. You said a million dollars, mm -hmm. Ibita. Mm -hmm. Are there specific industries that you're looking at when you pursue these companies or have them pursue capital? Right. So we're what is called an industry agnostic okay. um, fund. So we can invest in any industry, but there are some that we shy away from, and we understand that are you know sort of a, a of a different type mm -hmm. of a different nature. For example, construction companies. You know they're very cyclical or investing in real estate. So those things we typically don't do. But we will invest in a company that, for example, we have in our portfolio company that provides painting services to corporations to you know condominiums and so we like to invest in companies that are in areas that are business services goods or services so for example in the vertical of food and beverage we understand that the majority of the large and mid-sized retailers are in high demand of ethnic food and high quality food and you know products of food and beverage and so we like that and we're always talking to you know the Walmarts of the world or the Kroger's of the world the CVS's mm -hmm. of the world and mid-sized retailers to try and understand what they're looking for and try and bring that product into their aisles so we also love manufacturing 
And we're really looking for areas where there's growth, where there's entrepreneurial savviness, where there's an opportunity to serve a corporation and to get the, that entrepreneur to grow. We, we have a model that we, we love to you know, bring to the entrepreneur to sort of make it easy yeah. to think about growth, which is we, we ask the, the entrepreneur, do you want your company to be great? Yeah. But that G and that R and that A and that A and that T stand for very specific things. And I love it. Tell us about that. What, so, what does it stand for? So G stands for growth, right? Are you ready for growth? R starts, stands for restructuring or recapitalizing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know, companies go very fast to a great spot or they, they're going slower than the, what they should. So they need to sort of fine tune their capital structure and that's what is called a recapitalization. You also might want to expand the company. So when we call growth and expansion a, a little bit differently, growth is when you're taking one product or service mm -hmm. and you're scaling it. Expansion is when you're taking that product or service and that structure that you created to now go into something that has a better margin that can diversify what you've already done, right? So we're ta we've talked about the G, the R, the E, then comes the A, which stands for acquiring. Mm -hmm. Acquiring is actually a phenomenal way to grow. Right. And it's something that every entrepreneur should always be looking at. Who should they acquire? Should they acquire their competitors? Should they integrate horizontally or vertically? What are opportunities to not only grow through organic growth, but through acquisition? And then lastly, the T stands for transition. Many of our entrepreneurs are family-owned businesses, and they might be first generation, second generation, third generation. But at some point, there's a, a group or a person who's been at it 20, 30, 40 years and says, you know what, I want to cash out. Right. I want to buy my house and uh, in a, uh, you know, now enjoy life and have another cycle right. of my life. And, but sometimes it's difficult to think about, like, okay, how do I do that? So transitioning ownership is also an event where you're going to need strategic advisors and capital to do it in the right way. I love it. I love that you've broke it down in an acronym and it's so clear as <laughs> to what these different levels of capital access are. So thank you for yeah. that. Our I pleasure. do have a and question. And I must say that we have a great team at SBCC, including a group of millennials that have helped us immensely in thinking about these things. And it was one of our team members who one day, you know, junior analyst said, hey, this this sounds to me like a great idea. And that's how it got to exist. Shout so, yeah. out to junior. We love it. We yes. love it. Um, I think that that's great as well, because it goes to show that you have confidence in the team that you've hired. So I think team is very important as well in Absolutely. any business. And I'm sure Absolutely. as an investor, you're always looking at the strength of that team. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I do have a question, you know, we've talked about the various stages. It sounds to me as if you're looking more, are you debt financing, equity, do you do venture capital? What is the exact capital structure that you specialize in? So we do, we, we're flexible capital. So we could be a, a mezzanine investor, a senior debt investor, and to some extent an equity investor as well. Um, we try to create the right capital structure for the company. And we might be, for example, coming in in a mezzanine structure mm -hmm. and inviting an equity partner to be the capital provider on the equity side. So we love the idea of co-investments. As we explore more and more the partnerships with corporations, we're coming across a wonderful set of opportunities where we're actively inviting co-investors to invest alongside mm -hmm. us. And so we might take the debt side and they might take the equity side or we might you know, do it, uh, split it. And so there's many ways in which we can be flexible in the capital we provide and bring the right co-investors to allow us to create the right capital structure. So the biggest check we'll do under SBCC is a $14 million mm -hmm. check, but we might be you know, doing a round or helping do a round that could be 50, 80, $100 million, where we're bringing those co-investors to the table to help us accomplish that strategic and capital goal for the company. So you mentioned the largest check. What is the smallest check? So we can do as small as a million, but historically, our smallest check has been four million. Why? Because it's 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 tough to do the smaller deals, and and so the scale matters, and mm -hmm. it is important for companies to. And usually, when you're going to be at a million EBITDA, you know you're going to be at at least four or five million in revenue. Um, so you know it's it's something where we're always trying to create the 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 best impact in the market we're in. And we're learning that the market provides us today with some significant opportunities to do 
a larger size of check, mm -hmm. you know, from that four to 14. And so we're inclined right now and eager to be able to do that 10 to $14 million check and alongside bringing capital providers on the equity or the debt mm -hmm. side, where we together can do an investment of 40, 50, 60, 100 million. And in the investment cycle, how quickly are you expecting returns on those investments? So the, the investment cycle of a typical private equity fund is going to be seven to nine years. And so typically we're looking to invest in companies where we can have, you know, as we can go as short as one year, but typically it's going to be a structure that is going to give the breathing space for the company to implement their strategy. So a three to five year horizon is, is a typical one. How many pitches do you hear, uh, let's say within three months, a quarterly basis? I imagine a lot. Yeah, so every quarter, we, and, and um, the market is getting to know us every day more and more, so we see every quarter more pitches, <laughs> and I would say that uh, we are seeing like around 1,000 a year, wow. so around 250, 300 every quarter, uh, so yeah, lots of great business owners coming to us and sharing their story, and we love it, you know, we, we want to hear the stories, we invite advisors, we invite equity partners to invite us to be the mezzanine part. Uh, we work very closely with corporations and we love it when corporations introduce us to, and we, we have a model for corporations as well. We, we have created something that is called the SCD model. So mm -hmm. for entrepreneurs, it's the great model, building great companies. For corporations, it's the SCD model. Tell us about it. So SCD stands for scaling, converting, or divesting. So what does that mean? Scaling is an, a, a, a corporation might have a great company that they just want to see grow. They might be a U.S. provider. They want them to go global. They might have operations in two cities. They mm -hmm. want them to have operations in a few more, or they just want more of that product. Right. So they want them to have, you know, build more capacity. So they might call us and say, hey, you know, we have this great company. We're buying 20 million from them today, but we really would love to buy 50 million from them today. Can you help them grow? So that's the scaling opportunity. The, 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 the converting is the opportunity where a non-minority supplier can be converted into a minority supplier because there's a transition. There's an opportunity mm -hmm. for that company to be in the market. And now every day more and more corporations are understanding that that is a prime opportunity to take a great non-minority supplier mm -hmm. and convert it into a minority supplier. How? Through minority capital, companies like funds like ours and minority entrepreneurs that we can assemble and put together. So we love the challenge of a corporation calling us and say, hey, we know that this supplier of ours is in transition and can you help us find the right team to acquire it and can you be the capital provider? And then lastly, the divestiture opportunities are opportunities where there can be an asset, a manufacturing facility, a certain product in, you know, it could be a consumer uh, brand's product, a, a company that has a certain brand that they want to shed, mm -hmm. divest, put it in the market. And we love those opportunities to, again, also bring the right capital structure and the right entrepreneurial team so that that can be converted into a diverse owned entity. So in this 250 roughly pitches that you receive quarterly, mm -hmm. how many of those are direct outreach? How many are from corporations? And really, how many of those are truly what you're looking for? Do you find that there's a lot of mismatch in that number? So so the, the rough numbers, the way we think about the, the business plans we receive, we typically zoom into 10% of them. Then those 250, there's going to be 25 that we're saying, you know what, this is like in the zone that we're in and we like to be the type of investments that we want to do. And then typically out of those, we'll probably do one or two. So there's a lot of pruning, a lot yeah. of screening, a lot of selection. And it's a two-way street, right? We want to be the right capital provider and the right strategic partner. And we want to make sure that that company is the best suit for that corporation right. or it really that it becomes a win-win-win where mm -hmm. we do the right investment, the company grows, and it's going to be a great supplier for corporate right. America. And in that process, I would tell you, there's a lot of elements that come into play. There's a lot of sources that are like, you know, we love it and we've done a lot of work to 
create a lot of uh, deal flow coming from corporations. And so that is mm -hmm. every day more and more, and, and we love that and are always welcoming that and give high priority to those opportunities. We also are seeing um, other funds that are inviting us to co-invest with them. We're seeing um, brokers in the market, investment banks, boutique investment banks. Sometimes they specialize by industry, mm -hmm. they specialize by region, and they come to us because they know the value add we can bring, how nimble we can be, and so they present us their deals. Uh, and, but there's a wide variety of, you know, it could be accountants, it could be lawyers, it could be the entrepreneur themselves. We mm -hmm. work in, you know, many organizations where we have the good fortune of finding many entrepreneurs and we love to meet directly with them and understand what their plan is and, and, and help them to achieve uh, scalability and, and success. I find that it's a very interesting point because in my seat of supplier diversity, I am meeting a ton of businesses, and many of them are seeking contracts. Uh, many of them are not ready for a contract with a large corporation, and so it's a lot of filtering and mentoring yeah. and developing, yeah. and yeah. oftentimes I think that uh, people are not aware of how much filtering is involved, but yeah. then also from a capital perspective, it's in my seat, I was not aware of how many deals come past you that you really have to filter through. So it gives a really uh, great perspective to professionals in the industry and I think a uh, level of sensitivity to ensure that we are being very targeted as corporations, as practitioners yeah. to bring you deals that actually could stick. Yes, and I, I love that theme because and I actually teach a course at the Stanford Latino Entrepreneurship Initiative called What Every Entrepreneur Needs to Know About Capital mm -hmm. because my sense is that entrepreneurs need to raise their capital awareness and understand their capital journey really well. And then they need to prepare really well to be able to go out there and articulate what is that vision and what is that past, present, and future. And they need to do it in a very compelling way. They need to have the right people around them to be able to generate the credibility that they have the experience that right. they have the knowledge they need to in our case have demonstrated to be at a million EBITDA at least so they need to be making money not a lot but enough to show you know we're already there and here's our vision here's how we plan to execute it and I love it when I spend you know 15 minutes on the phone or 30 minutes on the phone with an entrepreneur and with a beautiful presentation they walk you through all these things and you're like okay these people really understand what is it that a capital provider like us needs to be able to help them? So I try to teach that so that when we're on the phone or we're right. in an email exchange, that that complete story comes across. And, and it's not easy, but, but I love to prepare them so that, you know, because it makes our life easier, makes corporations' life easier, makes their life easier. That's right. But certainly there's a tremendous amount of preparation that goes into that. So if awareness. you had to give three tips to entrepreneurs pitching for capital in terms of that pitch deck, what are the top three things that you're looking for? I know you said past, present, and future, but can we dive a little deeper into that? Yeah, well, you know, when we, when we say past, right, we're saying we want to understand the story. What ha how was that company founded? Why was it founded? What is that product and service that is in the market today? Why is it relevant to the market? What are the competitive advantages? And then situate ourselves in where they are today. And when you're doing that, you're hearing the story, you're listening to the capabilities, but very importantly, we're creating a financial picture in our mind. Right. So we want companies to have a very clear understanding and a very clear telling us of how they've grown revenue-wise, profitability-wise, how their margins have changed, how the dynamics in the market are, are changing, or, you know, the, so, so we, when we start to see that picture where people are really aware of who they are operationally, strategically, financially, and then very importantly, given where I am, here's my vision. I'm planning to acquire this company, and this is you know, what I need in order to do that. These are the resources that I'm seeking, and this is the capital structure that I think is the right one. You sort of get this complete package, and sometimes it doesn't come that way because there might be like this extraordinary idea, but there's other pieces missing. There's never a complete and perfect story, mm -hmm, right. but you want to hang up with that idea of, wow, there's something really valuable here, and there's a lot of preparation 
into creating that story of past, present, future. And it's numbers because financials tell the best story always, but you want also the caliber of the team. You want the references and the story of how they've been able to build businesses in the past. You know, The people component is unbelievably important right. because ultimately you're giving a check to an individual. I love this saying that what are companies? Companies are temporary groups of people and, and you're really trusting huh. people yeah. with their values and their purpose and their ability to run a company in good and bad times mm -hmm. and to be able to deliver the returns and the value they're promising in the market. That's and great. that's what we strive as investors to do as well. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time, Monica. We truly value it. We appreciate you coming and sharing some insights and look forward to seeing you at conference thank in October. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Angela, for the great work that you do and the, work, wor the great work that NMSDC does. Thank you for empowering entrepreneurs to grow and scale and be ambitious. And I love the number of the billion dollar round table that last year they bought from diverse businesses $84 billion. Wow. That's a serious number. And it, it's even more exciting when you think that 10 or 15 or 30% of growth can be achieved of that number mm -hmm. if you align the right supplier goals of corporations That's with right. the right entrepreneurs, with the right capital. So there's billions of dollars in value creation that we have in our hands to grow and collaboration like these ones are the ones that make it happen. That's so right. thank you, and I'm excited to be part of this journey. I feel it's truly a blessing. Agreed. Let's mm -hmm. change the world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to learn more and follow this series.